Hey, welcome back everybody to GDPG. Hey, we, we found, found the berries. Our berries. <laughs> All right, so you unpause, you find the berries. Ooh, and a cutscene. Oh, it's just oh, a. Oh, because I was doing Alt-Tab. So it says you've had some interesting travels. Oh, because you're an explorer. That's what that means. It even says you've had some interesting travels. Watery parts of the world. I was a mariner. Lived out of frontier for a time. So this is like crafting your story. Okay, so, uh, you so you're saying that because it says explorer, did you just like, were you thinking that you didn't really understand why it said explorer? And you're no. like, oh. No, I just, per I thought it was like a normal plot conversation. Turns out it was oh. her relating to you. I mean, right, that so makes sense. Come here. This pillage is destroyed. Accomplishes nothing. You conquer enough places and along with your homeland. It's your homeland they go after. Plenary has been able to quench my bloodlust. I wonder if anything will. That isn't your business. Conquer enough places. No offense, but you probably had that coming. They say the gods say that each man gets his due. Don't know if I believe that, but they do seem to have gotten the better of you. Hmm. It's been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Radrick's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You're here to settle like the rest of the lot. It's a hard offer to pass up. You won't find many offers like that in these parts, believe me. Got some big plan in store? Gonna settle here and start a new life. Oh, man. Well, who knows? Radrick pays well enough. Maybe we end up neighbors. <laughs> hey, I'm wasting time here. I didn't even give you an earful. Let's be on our way. Right, let's get back to the camp. Who's who's Raderick? Uh the the lord who's offering money and land to mm, people. Wanting to okay. Sparkful is getting water anytime soon. It's when he feels like he feels like we should come about him first. Slap him around a little. Stream's just down the way. Come on, let's get you your water. So their font is very weird with the random like arches off of the S's. Yeah, I've noticed that. <laughs> it's like I mean, it's kind of fun, I guess, but I don't I don't really see oh, the point. Fast mode active. Whoa! Weird. How'd All you right. do that? Did you I just hit F? Oh. Because I got confused and thought it was Wast. So that's that's probably really good for ex exploring. Yeah. Um, if as soon as you enter combat, that's probably a nightmare. But probably. so something I did notice. Line of sight. My well, yeah, that. But also, <laughs> the map differed from when I played. Oh, okay. So it changed I around feel a, like bit. a little bit. I wonder if it's based on either your configuration. Or is it randomly generated? Because yeah, if it's randomly generated, that's actually pretty impressive because the uh, the pieces of the world surprise. feel like they Marvel fit very well. Like they're very um, integrated with one another. And usually with procedurally generated level design, mm -hmm. um, you usually can kind of tell where where things kind of like are put together, the little chunks. Yeah. Out of the trees emerges Sparful, one of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He had no longer carries his bow. There's a strangeness to his gait, his stride wobbly as he moves toward you with labored breath. Oh, dang. Sparful, are you all right? Sparful's toe catches on a rock and collapses forward in a heap, the feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Hmm. Ambush! Oh. Yup. We got Ambush. some bitches to kill. Oh, dang. We got two of them. What do we do? That's interesting. I don't know what to do. We should probably kill him. Let's kill him. So you're going to go and attack him and focus your fire on him. In fact, why don't you go ahead and knock him down? Because that makes it easier to get a lot of damage So Hunter done. and who? What's the other? Hunter. That's the Hunter. Glarf, Glanfathen Hunter. Oh, so they're both Hunters. They're both Hunters, yes. So do you think it would be better to focus fire? Um, yeah. That's generally how I've, I find playing games like this tend to work. Gotcha. Why didn't you knock him down? It could have... Well, okay, so... Oh, I guess he resisted. Yeah. That's um, right. usually a pretty important well, statistic in games like this. Yeah. Now, I do like the fact that there's this pause function, because the second there was, that combat was done, I immediately thought, like, okay, there are, like, three different ways I can select on, them. I select my people. Mm. I can either click their circles and do it one at a time, I could drag and do it that way. I could pause and click their portraits and pick which ability I wanted them to use. So there's lots of versatility in the way that you want to play the game. It's all, I personally recommend doing the pause. Also, I noticed oh, something. Awesome. Wait, wait. Hover, hover over that again. I was just about to say it would be awesome if you could just tap the space bar to pause it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it tells you which key it's, it's mapped to. Also, did you notice that when combat happened, things slowed down? Uh, fast mode being active was not a thing. Oh, really? It the automatically second, disengaged? The second it ended, fast mode went back up. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I'm glad they didn't set it up so that fast mode just kind of screws you over if you leave it on. Yeah. Oh, we got company. We got company. Okay, so far I'm actually pretty pleased with the design of this. Yeah. Not that I expected to be disappointed, but, um... Oh. 
Like, it, it feels very well thought out, and I, I'm appreciative of that. Okay, you knock you down. And then once you're done, go and attack him. And you exploded! I don't know why that happened, but okay. Critical hit, maybe? Maybe. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. Um, so going back to the dialogue for a second. Yes. Um, I find it really interesting that they switch up the dialogue based on, like, I guess your class in this instance, um, in that conversation you had with your character earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see how much that that changes throughout the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. um, because if, it's, if they are consistently good at kind of modifying your your dialogue that's a lot of work yeah like that that would mean that this is the kind of game where you definitely can't get away with one or two writers you have to have a team of like yeah. 10 to 15 writers because dear god that is so much text now i wonder because i have aha oh wait no one <laughs> two three Oh, so, so one you do of the more things weapon that they sets. had for character creation for picking this sub race of this giant thing was you get an additional weapon mm -hmm. set. I think you can level. I think you can level up to the point where you can unlock them. Probably. Um, but this one just automatically starts you off with a third weapon set, which is pretty cool. I I wonder if you can get more classes too as you level up in this game. Like you could train in, um, a, you can multi class basically, because mm -hmm. Baldur's Gate was based on D and D. Um, yeah. I don't remember which iteration of D and D it was it based was, off of. It was either one or two. Two point oh. That's what Ian told me about this. Baldur's Gate was second edition. Neverwinter Nights was three point five. Ah, okay, that's pretty clever. So let's see, because I just added a weapon set. Can she use it? Yeah. That Boom! Means. She just became a ranged character. Ha! Huh. That's, Very cool. That's awesome. All right, so we'll have her be ranged. Uh, as we continue to find the uh, bastards who have taken over our camp. On July, the massacred remains of other travelers peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. Ooh. Kalisha puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to ward away some poisonous vapor. The writing is really fun. I like that the the little thing where you find what's-his-name with an arrow in his back, it's like a storybook. You're reading yeah, a story. yeah. I thought that was a really interesting change of, of pace, too, with how they yeah. presented the story. I wonder if they did it because it was a very cinematic moment, like this big event is happening. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it's very different from this, but yes. ultimately it's presenting it in the same format. It's just different presentation. Ah, wait, it does get better. Oh, that, really? That mechanic does get interesting. Okay. But it will happen in a second. So, basically you come across here, there are bandits, and the, the guy that you bought stuff from, or didn't buy stuff from. Make sure you're talking you into the not, microphone. Dang it. The guy that you bought stuff from or didn't buy stuff from is the only person left alive that you can see, and he's held, you know, whatever. Uh, trespasser, do not forfeit this man's life for a fight that you will lose. Oh, look at that. You can use you one can of your use skills. some of your skills. It also shows you what uh, attitude you're going to use. Huh. So That's let's fun. try lore one. The ruin has not been sullied by our hands, men of Air Glanfath. Here's a, here's a question for you. So, in most RPGs, especially exploration RPGs, rule 101 is that you always want to choose the option in dialogue that has a skill associated with it. Mm -hmm. Now, does this game follow that same behavior where it's always beneficial to choose one that requires a skill? Or can it still backfire on you? It could still potentially backfire on you. It depends I mean, have, on your attitude and what skill you're using, I think. Have you encountered this? I have, Okay, but not at this part. Hmm. Um, lay down your arms. See, here we go. Three. Oh, it's right here. We can't. It, it well, lets we, us we, know. Yeah, we can't use it. Right. But now we have a ton of options that use all sorts of different stats and skills, um, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. This way you not listen to reason is the standard plot thing, or if you want to jump into your whatever. Um, what should we do? Should we try Athletics 1? Should we do Resolve 15 and tell him to kill him now? Um... What do you think we should do? I wish there was a little bit to tell you what is a stat and what is a skill. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can kind of tell based on the numbers, right? Like, resolve yeah. is a stat, obviously. Um, I think they need some sort of icon, though, to further represent it. Because right now, looking at this, True. Um, if I was unaware of that, I would see resolve 15 and be like, well, that's the harder one to get, so obviously that's the best option. The only... Um, but, well, continue. Sorry. But that may not be true because it's a stat, right? So, like, I think that needs further reinforcement that there are 
differences going on here. The only reason, the only minor argument to that is that when you're making a character, there is a screen devoted to your main stats and buffing them and debuffing them. Right, The only time you see the skills are when you're coming across the backgrounds and other stuff like that. And it would be nice to have a menu or like a, a list of the skills that you could get and showing you what modifications you're making to those while you're making your character showing the differentiation but uh, yeah that's my only minor thing is you do I mean, know you understand where that right right like i i agree ultimately i i just think like especially early game just because you've seen the stat screens already doesn't mean that it's really gonna sink in yeah um i feel ah, like shit man sets to his feet to engage you okay so so he, he gets he gets cut but he gets pushed forward so he's not just mm. dead and dialogue we now begin the combat all right so we now have this guy in our party however he, is, he does have some bruised ribs, so he's minus 20 fortitude and minus 2 constitution. So I think there is a way to avoid him getting hurt uh, in that little dialogue thing. I just sort of went for it. Hmm. Um, blinding Strike will have it done immediately on this guy. That's one of his skills that he's got. We'll have it done on him so he can't chase him as he eventually escapes. You are going to go after that one because that one's a ranged character and why not? Um... And you pepper this guy with some arrows. And activate actually activate that before you do anything. Alright? And break. That's a pretty tough battle, oh, too. Immediately knocked down. Shit. Oh, that's the guy you're trying to protect? Yes. I All got right, you. So he's already down. Cool. Um Pause, Jesus. Okay. Wow. Alright. Uh, <laughs> a lot is happening in only. There is seconds. a lot that does happen pretty pretty quickly. Uh, you use knockdown on this guy. And you don't, unfortunately, you don't really have access to a lot of stuff off the bat. Which is weird, because I thought I had knockdown. It might change based on the weapon you're using. That might be the case. I think that's most likely the case. Gotcha. Because how would you knock down with a bow and arrow? It doesn't make any sense. Gotcha. Um, which, okay. that's pretty you significant, too, you because... Then that means that your build also really changes what weapons are most useful for you. And it should already be that way, right? Because you already have stat bonuses and such. Right. Um, now, but abilities, I think, are really the main reinforcement for that. Gotcha. Now, real quick, because I know we're about to end the episode. Mm-hmm. One thing that did flash across the screen. Talking had, the microphone. Mm, one thing that did flash across the screen uh, when I brought uh, Heoden, the, the merchant guy, away from the battle, it's a disengaging. There is a mechanic in place where if you try to pull somebody out of the battle, they do. There is a chance that the enemy can get an an extra attack on you. Oh, it's like okay. a D and D rule. It's the attack of opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, they're saying forgive us, or saying, or oh yeah, they're calling out to the god saying forgive us. Um, they're having a conversation with something that's not even there, and then all of a sudden things start getting a little crazy. There's a plot thing in place where sometimes the wind and stuff can anger the spirits, and then it becomes crazy. Get inside. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The, what what uh, happens? I guess we'll see. Yes. Oh. Yup. We're outside of these ruins. The caravan master says, do not go in there. Leave it alone. <laughs> Ignore it. Um, this is where that little mechanic with the turning of the page story, this is where it gets interesting. Ah. So similar to the uh, dialogue prompt earlier, you can have skills and stuff that will impact how things go. Similar things here. You're climbing up the precipice trying to get inside the ruins. Hayden trails behind, slowed and injured and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers, who had been feigning death, lunges for Hayden and topples him onto the rocky ground. Now, unfortunately... Okay, so this this is is like an action sequence, almost. Exactly. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Now, this is unfortunately the same situation that I had come across as well. I can fire at the attacker... There's whatever the hell that is, and then or allow him to figure it out on his own. I always fire at the attacker because having an extra guy in the party is kind of awesome. And I don't want to see him die. So totally your aim fair. is true, and it hit the and the hit jars Hayden loose, lurching to his feet. Hayden clambers up the base of the rocks as he nears the top. However, the wind flares, pulling him up sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving out onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it. Securing his other hand, you pull with waning strength, and it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. <laughs> they hold just long enough for Herodin to set his feet to join you on the trembling ledge. There is a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. 
Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. You dive into the ruins. Very cool. So, so this well, yeah. this is a good point to end the the the, the, the episode. <laughs> um, yeah, there's some cool stuff going on though. I I actually really like the kind of how they combine these different mechanics with the skills and and what's really and interesting and we can't really hear it because the, the we have the sound down. Every time something like that happens, there is sound. There is stuff happening. Oh, you can okay. hear it as well as feel it in the the tone shift. Anytime something like that happens. Nice. Question of the day. So, question of the day. Um, with a game like this that has a lot of different mechanics and stat and stats and you know skills and attributes and all that stuff, um, how do you think is a good way to present to, that to the player that helps them remember what mm-hmm. their stat allocations are, and so they, they know what what everything is too? Yeah. We only kind of saw that a little bit, right, with with some of the skill choices or with some of the options in the dialogue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what's a good way to make sure that your players remember what's what everything is? Even if it's a quick little menu that pops up, whenever uh, a quest or a dialogue comes up where it's asking for a skill, what if a little menu shows up and shows you your list of skills, your list of stats? Whoa, whoa, save it for the comments section, Cujo. It's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. See ya.